Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about stops and starts when you're stick welding. Now this is a really important skill to have because with stick welding especially, you have to stop when your rod runs out. So when I was in welding school about a decade or so ago, a little more than that, um, the instructor there would uh, always tell us we have to burn it to the numbers. What he means by that is here on the stick welding electrode, it usually has the numbers for what type of rod you're using um, back at the end. And uh, if you had it longer than that, when you stopped and then you started back up with a new one, you'd get in trouble. So, so that was a, a good lesson to learn and, and really if you go to work somewhere they're not going to want you to waste rods and if you're buying your own you probably shouldn't want to waste them either. So um, it's a good practice to get in to learn how to restart and not be afraid of it so that you can just use your rods all the way up and then start up with a new one and it'll work out uh, just fine. There's other reasons you might have to stop. Maybe you uh, got bound up or got interrupted or you noticed something wasn't going well. So this will help you out with that. Now today we're using 7018 electrodes and I have the machine set at 130 amps. It's a 1 8 inch or 3.2 millimeter 7018 electrode um, that I'm using here. And uh, this, this electrode runs really a uh, pretty smooth bead, right? And so it's kind of a little bit more difficult to tie into than maybe if you're running a 6010 or 6011 where it penetrates deep and you can get right back in there um, and doesn't deposit as much. So I think this is a good rod to, to learn this skill with. Um, but the principles will apply to other things. So when it comes to running this, um, technique, the first thing you need to do is plan ahead, right? And so when you're welding along, you probably don't want to put your restart right like a quarter inch from the end. You want to leave a little bit of space, right? Maybe an extra inch on the end of your run at least um, so that you'll have room to do this. Now, um, when you finish a weld normally, you'll hang out for a minute and it's a good idea to let the rod fill in. Well, when you're doing a restart, my preference is to not do that and to just whip out quickly, right? So here I'll show you, I've started welding and I'm welding along and then uh, let's say I got to the end of my rod or I had to stop for some other reason, I'll just whip out fast. And what that'll do is it'll leave a crater at the end that I'll be able to fill in when I go back and start back up. Now it's always a good practice to clean off the slag off of your weld and, and have a really nice clean area to get your restart so you don't trap that slag down in there. And uh, so I'm going to chip this slag off and brush it out uh, with wire brush. Now I'm using some Hobart 7018 electrodes and I haven't bought this brand before and honestly, uh, you know, they, they run just fine but the slag doesn't peel off like other kinds that I've had, you know, other, other kinds it'll just peel or flake off. This stuff is a little bit more sticky. So uh, it takes just a little bit of uh, pecking here and, and chipping at it and I'll get it cleaned off, brushed out and I'm ready to go. So now here's how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to strike the arc right at the point that I restart, right? I'm going to strike the arc up ahead and then I'm going to move back and kind of loop or, or just head back into the area where I left off with that crater. Now my preference is to overfill it just a little bit. So um, you've got to be quick to get a, a view of your weld pool there. So you, I'll strike an arc and then move back in here like that and, and I'm trying to make a little bit oversized weld right there because that's preferable to underfill. Now some people are so good at it that they can make it look almost continuous, right? You can't even tell that there's a restart. Um, but for me, I, I overfill it just a little bit in that small area. So let's go ahead and do it here. So I'll strike an arc there up ahead like I was talking about and then move back in right over that crater and then let it fill for just a short period of time and then I'm off and running again um, at the same speed trying to get the same consistent uh, result as I move along. And uh, when it goes well, um, you, you have something that you can be pretty confident in the strength there because that, that is a region that if somewhere were to fail that, that would be a likely uh, place because it's a discontinuity, right? It's not continuous 
but uh, if you do it right, you won't have a defect or a problem there. So um, hopefully that uh, helps out. I think it's a good skill to practice and learn. And if you wanted to do some focus practice, right, you could weld along an inch and a half on, on a little coupon like this and then uh, break out of it and then go and restart and then weld along another inch and a half and restart again. You get two or three out of each coupon and you'll, you'll get the hang of it pretty fast. Um, and then it's something that uh, you won't have to be afraid of when it comes to restarting on your projects. So uh, if you're interested in learning more uh, stick welding tips, I have a whole list of videos down in the description below that might help you out. And if you want to learn more to up your game in welding and fabrication, go ahead and click that subscribe and I'll keep sending videos your way. We'll see you next time.